Welcome back everyone. This is the last part of the AR portal tutorial. The objective now is to create the world behind the portal. For this tutorial I choose to use a popular 3D scene called Spanza. This scene is used widely in computer graphics. You can find a modified version of this 3D scene in the data folder that you can download from the link in the description. Before importing the 3D model of the building, we have to first import its textures. Create a folder, name it Textures. Create another folder called Sponza. Download the data folder from the link in the description. Open that folder, then go to Sponza. Move all the textures into assets. Hello AR, Textures, Sponza. Now open your data folder again and then copy spanza.fbx into the folder 3D. Now create a new folder named materials. Select sponza.fbx, then choose materials, then extract materials. Create a new folder called Sponza inside materials and then export your materials inside that folder. As you see, the materials are correctly exported. You can drag and drop your 3D mesh into the scene to check if it looks as expected. Now that our Sponza scene is correctly imported, let's move to the next step. What we want now is to also draw the building on top of one of the tracked planes when we touch the screen. The functionality will be the same as what we did with the portal. This step is very simple, because we already implemented the code to do that. All what we have to do is to add Sponza as a child of portal. If you build your application to device now, you should be able to walk inside the building. Till now, we were using Unity's default materials for the portal and the building. In the next step, we will assign custom shaders to our 3D objects, because we will need to do some modifications to the shaders later to achieve the portal effect. Go to Data, then Materials. Copy portal.shader into materials. Now copy sponza.shader from the same folder into materials sponza. Assign sponza.shader to all the imported materials. Create a new material named Portal. Assign Portal Dot Shader to that material. Assign Portal Material to Box 002 and Box 001. We are now ready to implement the portal effect as seen in the video. The building should only be visible when seen through the door. There are two main techniques to achieve this effect. The first one is to use an additional render target. The second technique uses the stencil buffer. In this part we will be using the stencil buffer because it is more optimal than using a render target. Let's start by creating a new plane. This plane will be used as a mask to only show what's behind the door. Resize the plane to fit inside the door.
go to data, materials, then copy portal plane dot shader into the folder materials of your project. Create a new material, name it portal plane and then assign portal plane shader to it. If you open portal plane dot shader, you will see that it is a very simple shader. This shader will fill the stencil buffer with some numbers instead of drawing on screen. The vertex shader will convert position to clip space. The fragment shader will output a black color, however this output will get ignored because we disabled color rights by setting color mask to zero. Setting color mask to zero means that we will draw nothing to screen. The stencil instructions means that we will fill the stencil area occupied by the portal plane with one. In summary, the shader tells the GPU to fill the stencil buffer instead of drawing on screen. Now that our mask is ready, let's do some modifications to the building shader to only draw to the masked area. Let's add some stencil instructions. What we mean by these instructions is that we will only draw the fragment if the content of the stencil buffer equals to 1. If you remember, we already filled the area occupied by the portal with the value 1, so we will only draw the fragment of the building if they are behind the portal. We now have a fully functional portal effect. If you build a device, you should be able to walk around the door. However, if you walk through the door, you will see that the building will disappear. In the next step, I will show you how to fix this problem. Let's first disable everything that's related to AR, so that we can easily test an editor without the need to use the device. Disable all components that are related to AR core. Add an early out to the update function of arcontroller.cs. Now run the application in editor. Select the main camera and then move it through the door. As you can see in the camera preview, the building completely disappears. What's happened here is that when the portal plane that we are using as a stencil mask disappears from the screen, the building also disappears. That's because the masked area is no more visible, which means that the stencil buffer is not going to get filled in. Let's fix the issue. What I want to do next is to ignore the stencil test once we are inside the building. Start by creating a new script, name it Portal Manager. Attach this script to Portal Plane Game Object. Add a rigid body to the camera. And check Use Gravity. Check Is Kinematic. Add a Box Collider. Check Is Trigger and then modify the size of the collider because we want to fire the collision before the camera reaches the door. Select Portal Plane Game Object. Add a Box Collider. Remove the Mesh Collider. Check its trigger. Make sure that the collider is aligned with the door. Before writing some code, let's explain the theory behind what I will be doing. Currently, we created two colliders, one attached to the camera and the other one attached to the mask. A collision will get triggered when the camera is close enough to the door, which will enable us to check the position of the camera to see if we are going inside the building through the door or we are leaving it. 
open portal manager.cs. Add a new public member, named main camera. This is simply a reference to our main camera. Now the tricky part. We are only interested by the position of the camera relative to the door. To get this position, we'll use the function inverse transform of the class transform. Portal manager is attached to the portal plane, which means that by using the transform of this game object, we will transform the camera position from world space to the portal space. If you remember correctly, when we created the portal plane, we rotated it by 90 degrees in a clockwise order around the x-axis, which means that the y-axis of the portal plane is now aligned with the z-axis of the world instead of the y-axis of the world. We know that we will only be moving horizontally, which means that we are only interested in the y-coordinates of the camera position in the portal space. This condition will check if the camera is closed or inside the building. A negative value means that the camera is inside the building. A positive value means that the camera is outside the building. A value that is positive but below 1 means that we are outside the building but very close to the door. Rename the update function true on trigger stay. This function will get called automatically when a collision is happening. What we want to do now is to disable the stencil test when we are about to enter the building. Open sponsor.shader and add the possibility to modify the compare function of the stencil test from script. Add a new property named stencil comp. Replace equal by the value of stencil comp. This will enable us to modify the stencil comparison function from script. Go back to portal manager.cs. Add a new member named Sponza. Add a new array of materials named Sponza materials. In the start function, we will fill in Sponza materials with the materials of the building. Now for each material in the Sponza building, set the stencil compare function to always. This means that when drawing the building, we will ignore the stencil test. When we are far from the building, we need to enable again the stencil test. Set the compare function back to equal. Go back to editor and then set the main camera variable and sponsor variable. Select AR core camera and set the Z size of the box collider to 2. Run the application on editor. As you see, the building becomes fully visible before we get very close to the door. Let's open portalmanager.cs again 
and use 0.5 instead of 1. This should fix the issue and only show the whole building when the camera is very close to the door. Run the application on editor again. You can see now that it's working as expected. Enable AR Cores functionalities again. You can now build your complete AR project. Congratulations on reaching the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials. See you next time.